Today I call it <clears throat> strong but bound. Um, and uh, the scripture that I'm going to read from comes from scripture, uh, Mark chapter 3 verse 27. And I'm just going to read you one verse. And it says this, now uh, no one can uh, enter into the strong man's house, a strong man. Say strong man and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he plunders his house. See every time I look at that scripture I always refer to, um, uh, to a strong man as a demon or Satan and um, using it in that sort of a context because in, in earlier uh, uh, verses you read and Jesus talks about Satan and uh, that uh, Satan uh, cannot cast out Satan because the kingdom can be divided and so this whole context of talking about Satan and then all of a sudden this verse comes and we always sometimes read it as, as a continuation of, of that what Jesus was talking about but um, I want to take a little bit from a different perspective today and uh, look at us as, as Christian as children of God being as a strong man and let me explain to you a bit Bible uh, so right point number one Bible calls us to be strong Bible calls us to be strong and I'll get to the scripture later I'm just going to lay a little bit of groundwork for uh, before we get into that um, in Joshua 1 9 he says I have have I not commanded you be strong and courageous as children of God God calls upon us to rise up and be strong for us not to be weak not for, for us not to be feeble for us not to be cowards not to run away from the challenge away from the pressure God is calling us to be strong say be strong he commands us before Joshua took over the nation of Israel and he led them into the promised land God came to Joshua and he told him three times be strong and courageous be strong and courageous be strong and courageous for us as children of God it is our portion to be strong in 1 Corinthians 1 18 says be on your God stand firm in your faith be courageous be strong in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 he says finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power in Joel chapter 3 and 10, famous scripture that we quote a lot. It says, let the weak say what? I am strong. God commands us to be strong. See, real strength is not hidden in your physical ability, but in your mental capacity. Real strength is not hidden in your physical ability, but in your mental capacity capacity that's what you hear sometimes you you guys probably have seen it or you can youtube it uh, thing, uh you know strange things like a you know 86 year old grandma lifts a car because the car rolled over the toddler i mean you 86 year old grandma this is you know impossible for a physical strength because our, we were created by god to be we were not limited to our physical strength as in body and our physical abilities but God placed this strength in us which is hidden in a mental capacity to embrace um, to embrace the challenge and uh, and uh, and whatever comes at us the one of the definitions of being strong is an ability to withstand great force and great pressure and God calls us to be strong he's calling us to be able to stand against anything that comes against us stand against every pressure stand against any kind of forces that comes against us for us to be tenacious for us to be relentless vigorous and for us to be resilient in our stand and never to back down this is who we are as children of God this is who we're created to be see when God created us Bible says he created us in his image when lion gives birth he gives birth to a lion when eagle gives birth he produces eagles every creature produces of its kind God created us in his image and we know one thing about God 
he, he is mighty God. He is strong God. And no, being strong, it doesn't mean that you don't have fears. Being strong, it doesn't mean you don't have challenges. Being strong, it doesn't mean that you're not scared at times. Being strong has nothing to do even with your surrounding or your physical ability. Being strong is being able to stand against all odds and not to give back, not to fall down, not to fall but knowing that God is on your side, it's being able to stretch your mental capacity to understand that I can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. And Bible calls on you and me to be strong. Say strong. Say I am strong. You know I was talking uh, the, other, uh, the other day, um, uh, Lena from uh, our, uh, our church, uh, she invited us to go to her house and just to, just to fellowship and have uh, some tea and talk. And talking with her, you know, uh, and I encouraged her and I told her, that I, I said that I'm, you know, I'm very proud of you uh, for, for being a strong woman. And she said, you know, I don't think I'm strong. And I said, uh, and she said that, you know, I, sometimes I feel so weak. And those of you that know her situation, you know, uh, some months back her husband passed away and she is left with three kids uh, as a widower. And, um, and she went through a very, very difficult time and still is still recovering. And she said, you know what, I don't, I don't think I'm strong. It's just by the grace of God. But this is the key. This is the point. Is that it's not that you don't feel pain. It's not that you don't feel the challenge. It's not that you don't feel at times that you want to give up. But it's that in the midst of all these things that are going on, you say, I'm not going back. I'm not backing down. I am taking a next step forward even if I don't see what's ahead of me even if I don't know what's the next step gonna bring even if I don't know what next day is gonna bring I am not going down Bible says that after you've done all that you can just stand and that's the real strength of a believer that's the real strength that we have to be strong and to be courageous never backing down never going back knowing that God's supporting our position not looking at our physical abilities not looking at our resources not looking at what we have or don't have but understanding that let the weak say I am strong regardless whether I feel weak well regardless whether you know I have a lot or don't have much I am strong because Holy Spirit is inside of me. God is on my side. He has his back. He, he has his mind sent upon me. He has great future prepared for me. He has good intents for me in Jesus name. And therefore I can't quit. I can't quit. I can't fall back. I have to stand strong and be courageous in Jesus mighty name. How many strong people do we have in this place? Come on let's put our hands for Jesus. <clears throat> Apostle Paul is writing to uh, in 1 John chapter 2 13 he says I'm, uh, I'm writing to you young people because you have overcome the evil one. You have overcome the evil one and that's the strength that comes uh, from the Lord. In Philippians 3.13 Bible says I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Say I can do all things in Jesus name. Amen. Point number two that I want to share and we're going to come back to the scripture that I read. Be free we read the scripture that said no one can enter strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he plunders his goods see we can be this we can be strong we might feel it or not feel it but we can be strong but the way satan plunders our life the way satan steals from us bible says he came to steal kill and destroy we know his nature the way satan operates in our life is through bondage he brings bondage into our life he brings addictions to porn to masturbation he brings addictions to lust he brings addictions to drugs alcohol he brings addiction to even as small things or as innocent things that we look at as like movies or constantly doing useless things addiction to social media he brings our life he brings a certain bondage it might be even small and insignificant but to rob our life bible says he binds the strong man first and then what he does he plunders of the goods let's take a look at for example small addiction like social media you know it's a it's not a sin but 
when it becomes a bondage it steals your time steals you from relationships steals you you see people they go out on a date and people are and sometimes I'm guilty of it too and you see two people are sitting together yet they're not even looking at each other and both doing the these things you know I, I'm sure they're not flipping through scriptures and I'm not getting filled by the Holy Ghost okay and Satan but this small addiction called Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and and whatever else that's coming up or will be he robs us of a quality relationship now we can go further further and further we can go in such a things as alcohol you know people say well alcohol is you know alcohol is a is is a it's not you know as long as you don't get drunk you don't abuse it but it's a small thing that comes and then leads to bigger and greater and then we see DUIs car accidents uh and uh, broken relationships broken marriages broken promises and Satan through bondage comes to a strong man strong woman like you and begins to steal drugs I mean obvious we don't we don't even have to we don't we don't even have to um go into that area you know there's one person uh a month ago I was talking to and I said hey I noticed that um I've heard that you're 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 smoking weed well you know he said weed is legal in Washington state and it's not a addictive drug and uh you know they say that weed is a gateway drug to other drugs but I, I don't believe so I've been doing for some time you know and I, I haven't been trying other drugs I was like okay all right we finished our conversation on that except that three weeks later he was in a an accident certain things happened lost his commercial license lost his uh, uh, lost money because uh, involved and possibly facing a lawsuit will lose anywhere uh, hopefully not but lose even more money small bondage but Satan operates through bondage through sin brings that and then steals remember one thing doesn't matter how strong you feel doesn't matter how much resources you have doesn't matter how educated you are doesn't matter how many things you think you got and you think you're invincible if you allow bondage in your life if you allow sin Satan will plunder your life your house your health your finances your business he will take it all but I'm glad that today we're in the house of God and even if you caught in the snare of and in the trap of Satan God will break you free in Jesus mighty name God will set you free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter 12 Paul says put every hindrance and put every sin that easily entangles in other words it says ensnares us See we run in a race all of us whether you realize it or not we run in this race called life and Apostle Paul says run the race in such a way that you will get a reward. If you're gonna get on a track and those of you that had at very least PE I'm not even talking about participating in sports but when you get in on a on a track to run or get into a game the point of a game getting into the game is so that you win. You know nowadays you know our society is shifting towards making everybody feel good and, and giving participation trophies but that's not a biblical way okay that's that's just not a biblical way bible says run the race in such a way that you get the prize the bottom line i don't want to get a participation trophy okay i want to get a trophy for winning the race so apostle paul in hebrew says run the race in such a way that you receive a prize but then he warns us and he says put away every hindrance every put away every weight first of all he says that will might slow you down and then he says put away sin that ensnares you sin that entangles you sin that eventually will bind you and you will put all this effort in your life you work so hard in your business but because you accepted bondage in your life because you allowed sin in your life because you allow certain area in certain areas Satan to operate in your life you are entangled 
and you run in a race you run in a really hard yet you're not receiving the reward yet you're not seeing breakthrough in your in your finances yet you're not seeing breakthrough in your health in your marriage you know how many how many marriages got broken down because they they, they allowed things like pornography and other things in their marriage thinking that they're gonna spice up the love life but at the end Satan used that Trojan horse to bring bondage in their life and broke apart their marriage their sexual life went even worse than it was before children are suffering because parents are split apart because parents are arguing and bondage Satan used bondage to come and and, and plunder their life Anytime you allow sin in your life, anytime you allow any kind of bondage in your life, Satan will plunder your life 100%. Whether it may not be here today, might not be even tomorrow, might not be even three months from now. But keep one thing in mind. If you hide that bondage, if you don't seek freedom, we have many wonderful leaders in the church. We have many wonderful pastors in the church that will not judge you but will work with you to help you to break off that addiction that you're facing break off that cycle of sin or cycle of setback whatever it is but we're here to pray for you to help you break that snare so satan will stop plundering your life and you can live a life that god has promised you See, we can sit here and we can ask God, God bless me, God bless me, God bless me and God wants to bless you and God might be even pouring blessings into your life. But if your vessel is broken, if your vessel, if your bucket contains holes, any kind of blessing that God's going to pour into your life is just simply will leak out. Any kind of blessing that God has for your marriage will simply leak out. If you don't get rid of sin and bondage, Satan will steal from your life you can be strong you can have degrees you can be smart you can have all kinds of things in your life working for you but if you have bondage it will plunder your life and I'll finish with um, you know my, my personal uh, my, my personal story uh, in my life you know I started uh, decided not to go to college right after high school or right when I was still in high school decided to I decided to uh, you know open a businesses and I was reading a lot of business books going to a lot of different business seminars and doing um, a lot of those things you know by by the age of 1920 had multiple businesses uh, a few years later had six or seven uh, five or six businesses well most of them were doing really well and was making really good money but there was certain things in my life and I didn't I don't understand it back then but there were certain generational curses were operating in my life the generational curse of of lust and other things that were laying dormant for some time or 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 they were um it was it was hidden for some time and on outside maybe I looked strong on outside maybe I looked successful and honestly but to 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 some measure if people would look at my life they'd said I was I was making very good money every single month I was making a month what people were making a year or more take home pay and I was doing very well you know uh, things were doing well owning uh, real estates and and, and uh, trade uh, have, uh, having a hedge fund uh, uh, company and uh, trading markets uh, doing very well for my age and what I was I was very well on the way to hit my goals and my targets becoming a millionaire owning these real estate properties owning these things and everything and right at the peak of all things things just came crumbling down it's like in 2005 6 and 7 it's like the rug was pulled under me everything that I worked for worked really hard everything that I accumulated for those years all the plans that I've made were just simply taken from underneath of me like unexplainably I mean it's just it was I was just like it's like I was watching a movie and I had no control of what's happening my marriage went down finances completely destroyed I mean everything was brought down because of that bondage of that generational curse that was following my family now I thank God for for our pastor I think that he for my dad that realized that this problem was spiritual problem and begin to seek spiritual solution and not until I received my deliverance from that bondage from that generational curse that things begin to work 
things I begin to put things together my life I begin to put those um, uh, those goods like what what we read in my life back into my house God began to bless me open up the businesses again things begin to prosper things begin to go God begin to open the doors God began to bless me with resources and connection and life turned around I want to tell you today if you notice in something in your life that you're working hard you're pushing forward it but there's constantly something pushing you back maybe there's a bondage in your life maybe generational curse maybe it has nothing to do like we were just heard a testimony of a person it's not necessarily something that he did it was just a generational thing that passed on to him but he was constantly held back in his life he's struggling hearing voices God today can break that over your life the Spirit of the Lord is here in this place and any kind of bondage whether it's some kind of sin that you constantly find yourself falling back into it constantly falling back into it you constantly being set back in your life God can break that tonight in Jesus mighty name maybe it's constantly you're with your career or your business you you're taking a step forward it seems like you're right about to graduate or it seems like you're right about to get that promotion get that job you're right you're just right about to secure that to secure that business deal and things just keep falling back I want you to examine your life and see maybe there is abundance in your life that Satan uses to plunder your life and God says that today it can be broken in Jesus mighty name today it can be broken I read first John first John 2 13 for you he says young man for you you have overcome the devil you can overcome the evil one today we, we can overcome Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample and triumph over every power of darkness, every scorpion, every snake. Jesus said about himself that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to declare the liberty to the captives and open the prison doors to the bound. God is getting ready today, tonight, to break the bondage over your life so that you can, so you can store up your house with the goods. So that you can store up your life with good things that God has for you. So you can receive what God has for you and not being stolen from underneath of you. In Jesus mighty name. I believe I prayed for today and I believe that God as we're gonna pray, God's gonna break some bondages today. That God's gonna break some chains today. That Holy Spirit will set somebody free today and you will leave those chains today here at this place walk out being completely free person living full potential that God has for you in Jesus mighty name